Hello and welcome to another Guild Wars 2 lore video. Today we're going to look at a conflict between a couple of Guild Wars 2's playable races, the humans and Char. We go back to the beginning, which starts with the Char. The Char were once a primitive people, filled with a primal rage and urge to conquer. They fought everything that posed a threat, even if that meant warring it with each other. They only survived by evolving into a strict hierarchical society. Warbands united under one leader, the Karnur, for the good of the Char. The golden period of the Char had begun. The unified Char spread across Tyria, into the far north of Ascalon and into the west and the Shiver Peak Mountains, subjugating or destroying whoever was in their way. The Char reigned supreme. However, the fierce internal rivalries started to surface. It was only the strength and leadership of the Karnur that kept the Char in order. Despite still being a primitive race, the Char remained dominant, threatened only by an ancient race to the south in the Crystal Desert, the Forgotten. However, the landscape of Tyria aided the Char, with many impassable mountains, and soon the Forgotten retreated, called away by some other power. Then, everything changed. Humans arrived on Tyria, brought forth by their gods, who gave humanity powers Char could only even dream of. After only 105 years after first appearing on Tyria, humanity, encouraged by their god Balthazar, invaded and conquered Ascalon, driving the Char out. The Char prepared to strike back, but then tragedy struck. The Karnur was assassinated. We don't know for sure who did it that day, a disgruntled Char, a human warrior, although the Char believed the latter. The Char fell into internal conflicts as the four children of the Karnur formed their own legions, blood, ash, iron and flame, and squabbled for power. Humanity meanwhile prospered and built a great northern wall to keep the Char out. That was completed almost a thousand years after humans had first driven the Char out of Ascalon. All Char had been able to do was raid human settlements. Although the four legions of the Char all claimed to be descendants from the Karnur, no one in truth knows how many cubs he'd sired. Over these past thousand years, many Char have attempted to claim the, th the crown, but were unable to hold on to power for more than a few years. The Char accept no leader not strong enough to defend his throne. Prior to the human arrival, the Char had no gods and no concept of divine power. They knew of the human god Melandru and even believed she created the world, but to the Char, these beings were not to be worshipped, but to be fought. However, when the Char saw the god-worshipping humans defeat them, using powers of their gods, the Char realised they needed gods of their own to give them power. Humanity meanwhile had prospered and established three nations, Or, Kryta and Ascalon with other territories on other continents. But in Tyria, it wasn't the nations who wielded power, it was the individual guilds. Guilds were formed initially as a means for merchants to meet and trade goods and set prices. Soon, however, guilds focused on warfare, religion, magics, and even social concerns, any reason that would bring people together. These guilds transcended the nation borders and as such, soon began to uphold laws made by the realms and were the true powers in Tyria. The major change to humanity came in the form of a natural disaster. Abaddon's mouth, a volcano in the Fire Island chain, erupted. This eruption spewed out the bloodstones, magical devices that leaked powerful magic into whatever it touched. When humans realised the potential power in the stones, political and military conflicts began. Countless guilds attempted to control the bloodstone. These guild wars lasted centuries, with there being three distinct guild wars. The first concerned the kingdoms of Ascalon and Kryta, although when it began and ended is unknown. The second guild war also involved Ascalon and Kryta, and again, no start date is known, although a historical monument of Cernia was built in 1020 AE to celebrate Ascalon's victory. The third guild war is sometimes known as THE Guild War. Although Orr had not wanted to become involved, however, when foreign guilds began fighting on the streets of Arar, they felt they had to retaliate. The Third Guild War began in 1013 AE, 
and lasted until 1070 AE. The war initially began again with Kryta and Ascalon fighting throughout cities such as Rin and Kylo. Major political turmoil occurred in Ascalon when the Ascalonian royal family were assassinated. A young Prince Baradin was supposed to ascend to the throne after his brother, the king, had perished. However, many felt the old king had brought Ascalon to ruin, and another warrior, who had saved Ascalon during the Guild Wars, should lead the kingdom. That man was the future King Adelburn. Baradin supported the, the crowning of Adelburn as it was Prince Baradin who had promoted Adelburn for his heroics in the Battle of Rin. With the human kingdom severely depleted from centuries of war, now was the time to strike, and so end the Guild Wars. Around 870 AE, just before the completion of the Great Northern Wall, the Burnt Warband, a group of Flame Legion Char, ventured to a volcano known in New Crichton as the Jaw of Oblivion. In this volcano, the Warband claimed to have found new gods for the Char. The Flame Legion all swore allegiance to these new gods and would convert or destroy anyone who refused. Soon, the other three legions fell under the control of these gods and their shamans. The Char then learn new magics to destroy their human enemies south of the wall. The shamans of each legion met in secret and returned to their own citadels to convince their people to worship their new gods, the Titans. These were actually demonic creatures created by twisting tormented souls in the foundry of failed creations, a place in the domain of anguish, realm of the fallen god, Abaddon. It was he who manipulated the Char into attacking humanity. Only one Char refused to worship the Titans. Bathea Havokbringer, a blood legion warrior, her strength and ability had made her leader. She fought against the shamans and was killed for it, her execution being a sacrifice to these new gods. Because of Balthea's actions, all female Char were removed from warbands to perform tasks at home in the cities, under the watchful supervision. Of the shamans. With the char worship complete, they united to strike against Ascalon, a magical device, the cauldron of cataclysm, given to the char by their titan gods, although it is said the device may have origins back to the ancient races of Tyria. A char shaman, Bonfaz Burntfer, performed the ritual of the searing. Titanic crystal meteors rained down upon Ascalon, shattering the wall and ravaging farmland. Bonfaz then led the assault on Ascalon, sending humans scattering. The siege of Ascalon had begun. Meanwhile, the Char also marched south on Or. In a panic, Vizier Kilbron discovered an ancient scroll hidden by the gods in Arar. Manipulated by Abaddon's servant, Rezekiel, Kilbron unleashed the cataclysm and plunged the nation of Or and the invading Char army to the depths of the ocean. The third kingdom, Kryta, also struggled to contain the Char. Having crossed the far Shiver Peaks without interference from the controlling Norn, the Char devastated Kryta. A drunkard and a thief, Sol D'Alessio, was an exile of Kryta. He was on the verge of death, lost until he came across a mysterious golden city, the city of the Masat. They saved his life and gave their magic to Sol. He returned to Kryta, preaching the powers of these unseen ones and founded the White Mantle. Saul then led a small elite group to sneak into the Char's main encampment and assassinated the Char leaders. The overwhelming numbers eventually overwhelmed them, and so Saul prayed to the Unseen Ones, who, surprisingly, appeared and decimated the Char with their magic. The Char were defeated, but at a price. Saul was taken, and others were mercilessly murdered. Those who were left alive and deemed most devoted told the story that Sol had been killed by Char, and so the White Mantle's origins were established. This left the Char with just one conflict, Ascalon City. However, during this two-year siege, human heroes re revealed the true nature of the Titans. The shamans then struggled to maintain control. The siege then changed from a holy war to an occupation. For the next 30 years, humans and Char would fight over this territory. Meanwhile, a last bastion for humans in Ascalon was their fortress of Ebonhawk. Adelburn sent a group of Ebon Vanguard under Kieran Thackeray and Gwen to reinforce it. 
they created huge walls to repel the Char. For another 30 years, the Char and humans waged war over Ascalon City, until finally the human resistance was broken. But even what was going to be a moment of triumph for the Char, human magic once again defeated them. The aged King Adelburn used a powerful spell with his mystic mystical blade, Magdir, and created the Faux Fire. A bright, burning heat swept through the city, devastating the Char army. Once the heat subsided, the spirits of the defeated Ascalonian soldiers rose with their ghostly weapons, forcing the Char to abandon the city. To this day, Ascalon City belongs to the ghosts, always fighting. The Char did learn one thing from this, that they can still conquer without their so-called gods. Eventually, the Char shamans were overthrown, and female Char returned to the front line as the Flame Legion were cast down, allowing the legions to reclaim their place as the driving force of Char society. However, although most of Ascalon belongs to the Char, only Ascalon City, with its eternal army of ghosts, and Ebonhawk remain. A treaty between the Char and the human Crichton Queen Jenna has allowed humanity this last territory, accessed by Azura Gate. This was a reward for retrieving the relic, the Claw of the Karnur. For humanity, ore is lost. The Ascalon realm is limited to a single fortress, whilst in Kryta, the flooding of the capital in Lion's Arch forced them to relocate to a new home, Divinity's Reach. Although many Char and humans war with each other in opposition to the treaty, the majority uphold it, allowing Char to roam free in Divinity's Reach and humans to travel to the Black Citadel. After almost 1400 years of conflict, there is finally a peace. Will it last, or will we see a return to the Guild Wars?